Good afternoon, everybody. Assalamualaikum. First, I would like to thank the Center of Excellence to give me this great opportunity to come and produce some of my PhD work today. Uh, actually, I'm doing my PhD at University College of London about uh, studying all these assessment uh, techniques that you use for, the, for selecting the best embryo to be transferred. Today I'm going to talk about non-invasive assessment of pre-implantation embryos, which means assessing the embryo without touching the embryo at all. Um, why I choose this part to talk about? Because we all know that assessment of the oocyte and the embryo uh, reproductive potential is a really key step in the assisted reproduction in order to really result in a um, clinical pregnancy. One of the main um, assessment methods used in the IVF field is the morphological assessment. Nearly all the IVF centers use this technique to evaluate the embryo and the oocyte uh, depending on the morphological and cleavage stage. Embryo that showing good morphological as, um, quality are chosen for transfer. And that based on analyzing certain parameters that include the pronuclear morphology. Um, including the pronuclear morphology, the cleavage rate of the embryos, the fragmentation grade, as we can see, the thickness of the zoona, the um, appearance of the cytoplasm, and many other parameters. Um, as any technique, this technique really has some advantages. It's a quick, simple, inexpensive, as we only need to do this assessment is a simple light microscope. It enables identi the identifications of embryos with rapid or slow division rates. It's also enabled um, identifying the changes if you're in the pronuclear zygote morphology or locations which is found that has a real re relation to the embryo development to more later stages and as well as to the area, its implantation potential. The disadvantages of this technique that it unable to detect those embryos carrying chromosomal abnormality or any type of genetic abnormality and there is no standardized grading system that apply all over the world. It's very between different laboratories. So can we still be using the morphological um, assessment as the sole criteria? I really doubt. Okay, the omics. Uh, recently, these um, more advanced genomics, more advanced um, analyzing strategies, including the, the genomic, the proteomic, the metabolomic, and even the transcriptomics, most of these techniques has been introduced to the field of assisting reproductions, and some of them has really applied at different stages during the embryo development and shown really um, uh, good advantages as well as some limitations. And the first omics techniques that are, I'm going to talk about, and we can consider it as my second non-invasive uh, technique, is the metabolomic assessment. Metabolomic assessment is a technology that recently has been developed for the non-invasive assessment and the measurement of embryonic culture media components, including the measurement of the appearance or the depletions of glucose, pyruvate, lactate, or amino acid, and then using this data to evaluate the physiologic and the pathologic activities of the embryos. Henry Lee's hypothesis of the quiet embryo states that uh, embryo with the quiet metabolism has a really higher viability than stressed embryo with um, active metabolism. And the conclusion of this hypothesis actually has been derived from all these previous studies that measures the oxygen consumptions, the glycolysis, the amino acid turnover, and others. Some studies found that the glucose uptake actually correlated to the ability of the embryo to give a, um, a clinical pregnancy after transfers. And some actually other studies show that the metabolomic profiling can be used to determine
following the sex of the embryos, and the glucose consumption found to be correlated with the plastocyst development. The technique used, most of the technique used in this um, field are bioanalytical methods that have been already adapted from existing biochemical techniques. Some of these techniques are separation techniques as the gas uh, chromatography or high performance liquid chromatography. Some are other tech, um, detections technique like near magnetic resonance technique and mass spectroscopic. And some techniques are combination between the detection and the separations. For these techniques to really be validated and get informative results, they need to be efficient and unbiased. They need to really enable the separations of all the analytes in the cultural media and allow the detections of these analytes after the separations and the quantifications as well. The first part of my, one of the part of my PhD project was to examine a certain machine that has been launched by a company called Molecular Biometrics. Um, the principle of this machine is to analyze the spin cultural media using the spectral photometer principles. It uses a near infrared resonance um, spectral photometer that utilizes the absorption of light of certain composition on the cultural media um, in a given sample. The company said that embryos that have a viability score over 0.3 is a really best embryos for transfer. And they suggested to use these techniques for selections. Actually, their, um, some of their publications have really convinced some people that this technique could be a good technique. But actually, when we went deeply through their results, we found something different. For example, in one of their results, they said that the viability score was 0.31 of those embryos that uh, em uh, of implanted embryos. And those embryos that failed to implant had a viability score of 0.6, which is statistically not significant. Another study showed that the implantation rate was 35% in embryos with high viability score and 25% only in those with a low viability score, which means that even those embryos with low viability score still can implant. And if we apply this technique in choosing the best embryo, so it will be a great probability of choosing really good embryo with high implantation potentials. So to examine the validity of this technique, what we did, we cultured the embryos until the blastocyst stage. I'm just going to go show some examples of the results. Um, after we culture the embryos until the blastocyst stage, we take the cultural media and we analyze analyze it using this technique. We found actually a disagreement between the array CGH result and the metabolomic profile. As you can see that both embryos had a viability score higher than 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 0 0.7, while the array CGH <coughs> indicated for the first embryo gain in chromosome 16 and chromosome 21, and the second embryo show loses in chromosome 13. So this technique, in conclusion, was actually non-informative. There were no separations of any composite in the cultural media, no detection to anything, no quantification to anything. It's just calculations done by the machine itself that we don't know anything about it. All the embryos give a really good viability score, even the abnormal embryos. It, the, the machine was unable to identify those embryos with any chromosomal abnormalities. So recently, after all these studies that we showed and other unplanned, uh, other planned studies done by the IVF clinics, this uh, company um, finally withdrew their machines from the market. The second metabolomic technique that I'm going to talk about is the amino acid profiling. Why we choose the amino acid? Actually, amino acid really play a very important role in the embryo development as they serve as a developmental and energy metabolism regulators, bioscientific precursor, especially for the proteins and the nucleotide, serve as osmolite signaling molecule, energy 
soils, scavengers, pH buffers, and antioxidants. So by studying these compounds, um, studying these compounds really could give um, a clear idea about what happens exactly metabolically with the embryos and therefore its physiological activity. How we detect the amino acid? The method simply, uh, we culture the embryo singly in a four microliter drop of the calcium media for 24 hours. Then we transfer the embryo to a new calcium media and take this media and analyze it by the HPLC machine, where a separation of the all amino acid carried by the machine and um, quantification of each amino acid done and we create what we call it the amino acid profiling. Previous studies that use the amino acid profiling in pre-implantation um, diagnosis showed that the amino acid profile can protect those embryos that could manage to reach to the plasticist stage. Pryson found that clear 